Welcome to the Epoxy Business Podcast. Proud member of the Woodprinter Network, home of the number one podcast in the wood industry. I'm Steve from Acres of Timber and Woodprinter Life, and along with my co-host Jake from Olog and Sawmill, we'll be diving into the world of resin and epoxy every week. If you're a maker or wood entrepreneur interested in learning the ins and outs of the epoxy business, this is the place for you. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy this episode. The Epoxy Business Podcast is proudly sponsored by Olag and Epoxy, the premier epoxy and resin system for professional makers and wood business owners. Making exceptional products starts with the right tools and materials. Visit olaganepoxy.com today and find out how to take your projects to the next level. Once again, that's olaganepoxy.com. Hey, welcome to a new episode of the Epoxy Business Podcast. I'm your host, Steve. And I'm your host, Jake. So welcome. We're so excited. Um, and this is Alan Nicholson, who's our partner at Lab Surface. How you doing? Welcome, Alan. What's going on, Alan? Doing very well. Thank you for having me. So, Alan, um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Like, how, how did you end up in this world as, like, you know, in the epoxy business? Uh, it all started uh, about seven years ago for myself. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was in the cleaning business, and it was the cleaning business that brought me into the epoxy industry. Okay. But some of the school districts that were requesting certain jobs to be done, and if there were certain things that I could do, and that's how it all started. It was thanks to the school districts that I actually got into the epoxy business. What, what was it in the school districts that made you, like get into the epoxy like what what specifically carried over from that to epoxy well i was doing um tile and grout restoration okay uh, after being in the cleaning industry for 25 years um i specialized into uh tile and grout restoration and then from there, they asked me if I was able to restore those famous Bradley sinks that are in the sink, in the schools, you know, in the washrooms. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The circle one where you push on, you know, with your foot. Yeah. And to figure out how to restore it, uh, I actually used epoxy. Ah. I grew it all down. And then I just recovered the entire thing with epoxy. So that's how it all started. That was your first little epoxy project, huh? Yes. Was, oh. I still, still have the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy, but we ended up doing it. And then actually that whole summer, I spent the whole summer just restoring Bradley sinks. I did almost 150 of them for three I different <laughs> how how would you restore that with the epoxy you have to grind it down to its original form because in the long run what happens is that the hand soap the dirt the grime it eats away at the cement that's mixed in with the terrazzo uh, uh, and that's <clears throat> So you have to grind it all down where it's all nice and smooth, um, but smooth enough um, so that the epoxy will adhere to it. Gotcha. So you, you would apply it on like a, do you brush it on or like a flood coat? Uh, you flood coat it, but then you brush it up on the sides and you keep playing with it until it seizes gotcha. a lot like, a lot like a flood coat. And then, uh, and then did you, because you, you got into flooring after that, right? Did you end up getting into epoxy flooring? Exactly. Because of those Bradley sinks that I restored for the school board, they then asked me to do some floors. And that's what I, from there, it just. You did this you for know, yourself or did you work for a company? No, I did it for myself, my own business. Entrepreneur. Uh, yeah. See, that's how, see, that's how he knows how to do all this steve that's why he's uh, out there getting everything that's why going. he's all qualified nope. <laughs> that's why he's our number one uh, <laughs> alan what so, so what I, what uh, at, at what point did you did you sort of make the jump over to 
working for an epoxy brand? When I turned 50 and my body said, okay, give it a break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I, I did, I did floors. Uh, I, I redid my floors and I give a whole new respect for people that do that for a living. Flooring? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I'd, rather, I'd rather produce than install all day. I know. <laughs> right yeah we made we made you know we made the floors in our house and we gave it to the to the guy and we he installed it looked great and then and uh and i was like how was it he was like it was so hard to work with i was like oh, i'm so happy that i didn't have to install it but you didn't you just did epoxy flooring uh alan uh, well, I did a mix of everything. It was always still tile and grout restoration, but I also included epoxy flooring, uh, okay. epoxy. And then I did some countertops. So uh, the only thing that I never did, well, actually, no, I did make one epoxy table. And it was a complete, not failure, uh, <laughs> <laughs> complete failure, but I it was the most expensive project I ever did because I lost, uh, well, to make a, you know, a small uh, round coffee table sort of light, let's say it was 24 inches in diameter. Well, I ended up using about 10 gallons. <laughs> I oh didn't seal. <laughs> I didn't seal. Oh, it. my. And it leaked everywhere in the garage that I had that I was renting. So, oh, bummer, Alan. Yeah. So that was the first and last time I ever did a table. I said, no, <laughs> ah, look at you now. Now you're providing for everybody that makes tables all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us, tell us, you know, so that first, that first gig, that first job at an epoxy company. Um, you know, what, what was your role? Um, you know, what'd you do? Like, what'd you learn from it? You don't have to name names if you don't want to. So. Oh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't bother me. Okay. <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. They say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, my first, uh, my first, uh, job for a, uh, distributor, uh, was with Chemtech. And I learned a lot in there uh, about the how to, uh, what not to do, uh, etc. I won't get into too many details, but uh, and then uh, after we parted ways, uh, I was approached by Lab Surface, and that's where I've been ever since. Now, now, wait a minute. The Chemtech, how long were you with Chemtech? When did you start out with them? Because I met you through Chemtech. That's how yes. we met. And so how long ago was that when you started with Chemtech? Uh, the winter, uh, I would say November 2019 is when I... Oh, when I, so, so then not too long after um, we linked up then, huh? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, we I did not vote up, I think it was in March of 2020. Oh, wow. I did not know that. So you just started with Kim Tech whenever you reached out to me. Yes. Uh, tech, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay. My job okay. Build their brand across the U.S. because they didn't have anybody who was able to do that. So that's what I did for them. So and you were part of the cat because the casting just, just started becoming popular then it just started coming in so chemtech was originally a um flooring epoxy right and then yes and then they hired you to start the casting world correct get the casting up and running across the u.s and in canada it was uh, available in the province of quebec where they're situated but yeah they wanted to expand into united states and they didn't have anybody at that time to do that Hey, gotcha. so can we can we back up a little bit? What's going on in the province of Quebec that there's so many epoxy companies? Like, what could you just put a lay of the land out there for us normal folks? 
Yes, uh, the province of Quebec has, uh, I would say, close to five manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them are just really distributors, white labeling their product and putting it out on the market. Okay, okay. But why, but why Quebec? Like, how did, how did, how did it all start there? I mean, I know there are other epoxy companies, but it just seems like it's like unusually high that there are so many Quebec. I mean, it's not even, not even in like Ontario really, or even, I mean, you know what I mean? Like in the U S epoxy companies are kind of spread all over, but in, it seems like they've all gravitated towards that. Like, can you talk about the history there? Well, a lot of them have existed for a while in the flooring industry. Okay. And noticed that there was money to be had in the casting countertops and division. Well, then that's what, that's how they expanded. And we all know that to get your name out there has to be on social media. So now you're seeing more and more because they all want a piece of the pie. Okay. 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 Now, now you have the resources up there in Canada, though, right? So it's just a bunch of chemist manufacturers, correct? Or how's that work? Uh, repeat that question. You cut out at the beginning. In the uh, to get your natural resources, you don't get your natural resources in Canada, right? Don't you have oh. the natural resources from somewhere else? So all the manufacturers in Canada are just chemists. The, the chemist part of the epoxy, right? Exactly. Uh, the raw materials come from, well, Lab Surface uh, purchases, um, I would say, 95% of their raw materials from the US. Okay. That's what I figured. Yes. And so basically, if you, if you look at the um, pricing that everybody is selling their product at like old login uh like super clear you know they they're more or less all in line and at the same price so anybody who is at that price range is getting and creating or making epoxy with u.s or canada raw material anything less than that it's coming from china where everything is practically given away yeah it's all due to the labor you know the labor wages and so on and so forth yeah so and then um uh i also noticed that there's only a few manufacturers out there and then everyone else is, and I think you just touched on this a second ago, and then everyone's a white label pretty much. So there's a manufacturer that has like 50 white label brands, but it's the same manufacturer, right? Yes. Compared to like Lab Surface, Old Login is their only brand pretty much. And, and then there's like off brand, right? Or something like that. Well, the Old Login is the only brand that we're going to be making, yes. Uh, but they also have their house brand, uh, which yeah. is, uh, and that's it. There's no other brands that will, that lab surface will make in casting. And I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not, you know, like we're not a white label. We are a partner with lab surface. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Wait, so. Ooh, I need so, to start. <laughs> I mean, I, that's kind of what I've been telling people. I mean, I have been telling people like we're, we're part, we're not like white labeling an existing brand. Like we are the brand for white, for, yeah. for, uh, for lab service. It's just yeah. underneath our, our, our brand. Yes. Um, what, um, you know, the, it's so interesting. Like what, why did you choose to work with us? Well, let's, I go back, the... let's go back to how that started first, because <laughs> there's a little misconception here that I want to clear up. Okay, 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 okay. okay do you want to so, clear it up, or do you want Alan to clear it up? I want to clear it up, and then Alan can tell his side of the story, because Alan doesn't know my side of the story okay, all exactly. too well. So, 
when Alan first reached out to me with Chemtech, Lab Surface reached out to me shortly after. Um, and it was, uh, I, was, I, was talking, I was talking to somebody from Lab Surface there. And I didn't know who Lab Surface was. And apparently, from what I understand, um, Chemtech and Lab Service used to play a part, used to be a partnership at one point in time or something like that, correct? Yes. And then, floor. yeah, for flooring or something like that. So, anyways, and then a representative came out to me from Lab Surface. And then Alan reached out to me first. I kind of knew who Chemtech was. I didn't really know who Lab Surface was at the time. And they're just a manufacturer. That's why. And I didn't realize that. And, um, <clears throat> and so, throughout our relationship, when I was working with Chemtech, they kept reaching out to me here and there. And um, so we kept in contact. Well, then when me and Steve started doing our coaching classes, me and Steve partnered up. Steve was the one that brought it up to me and says, you know, every time I look up uh, Chemtech, I see you. And then Steve said, why don't we create our own brand? Why don't you create your own brand? And I said, yeah, let's do it. I didn't even know I could do that. And then Steve helped me out through that. So through that process, then I started doing my research on manufacturing companies and I reached back out to Lab Surface, right? And then had no clue and Chemtech had no clue that I was reaching out to other companies, figuring out how to create a brand, doing all that type of research. Well, then in that process, when I was, when Steve and I were branding with Lab Surface, and we have already, by this point, we were already about six months into it. Chemtech had no idea I was doing this yet. Um, and then somehow, Alan, you and Chemtech, or you didn't work for Chemtech anymore, and you reached out to Lab Surface, not knowing Steve and I were already starting brand. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Surface. I didn't reach out to Lab Surface. They reached out to me. When I announced on social media that I had resigned from Chemtech, I had a few of them, a few of the manufacturers reach out to me. And Lab Surface offered me the best deal. And that's why I went with. And it was actually only three weeks later when I found out that you guys were actually talking with Frank. Uh, yes. Yep. That's exactly what happens. I've been talking with Frank this whole time. I've been talking to Frank ever since the very beginning, you know, and then it's just so funny how that it, that we connected because then lab surface got a hold of me. Frank got a hold of me and says, do you know a guy by the name of Alan Nicholson? <laughs> and I go, as a matter of fact, I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's my representative for uh chem tech. Yeah. And then he, uh, well, would you want to work with him again? And that blew me away. I said, absolutely, because we all loved Alan, you know. So, yeah, that's how that benefited us. So that's how that, uh, that's, and that's all part of networking, too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Networking, man. Social yeah, media. I, you know, I, so I met Alan when he was at, uh, when he was at Chemtech, because um, we were talking about collaborating as, as well then. But, yeah, it was, I mean, what, I mean, maybe, maybe, like, why, what do you think your role is? Cause like, not a, not what do you think your role is? Like, what do you think you're best at in terms of the epoxy community? Cause like, I know your value and you're invaluable to us. And we really appreciate the partnership and the platform that you've given both Jake and I, in order to pursue this, this dream and to also empower all of these other community members, which you, which you, you know, so successfully recruited, like, what, what excites you about Olaga and Epoxy and the partnership that we have? Well, it's the same thing as like you just said, it's the platform that you also, because you and Jake, the platform that you have created for yourselves makes my life a lot easier where <laughs> I could take that and expand it twice, twofold, you know, tenfold. Yeah. And that, that, that's my strong points. Uh, I'm very good at, talking i i can't write uh <laughs> you're good at scouting out man you're good at scouting out at, people sure. um via phone you know cold calling that that's a strong point um i mean even in our discussion groups at times i i'll write something and it's not what i meant it's yeah. just that <laughs> Not that I didn't go to school because I did. <laughs> I'm just, just, 
I just have more ease expressing myself verbally than I do in writing. Well, and not only that, little does Alan knows, he's also inspirational whenever he talks to people. Everybody loves Alan um, whenever, whenever he's, a, he's a relatable guy. And he's good at getting people to like join like my live feeds and getting people to share other people's content. And he's yeah. really good at, at uh, getting the distributors, helping out with their brands as well. He's like, he's like a community glue, right? Like he kind of gets everybody together and, you know, yes. and- so, Alan, I'm kind of scheming, and I'm just putting it out there. I just told Jake yesterday. I'm scheming for me, you, uh, Jake, to go to the uh, Canadian Grand Prix um, in June. And yeah, gonna... that's it. But, yeah, that's not a problem. Are you, are you agreeing to that? Sure. Great. And, I, and it's on lab surface. That's awesome. So now we have it on record. So... <laughs> Yes, we're going to Canada. We're going to watch some racing, some Formula One. We're going to talk business. We're going to talk epoxy. Um, what where do you see the sort of future of Olag and epoxy? Like where, and even for yourself in terms of lab surface, right? Like where, where, where would you like to be? What do you think? Well, uh, going back to what I was saying before, I was hired as for uh, as director of business development for the casting and countertop division yeah so it has to do with casting woodworking uh countertops uh, i handle all that yeah um for lab surface um now i think uh, i don't think i actually know that uh one day maybe not in the near future uh I still have years of work still available in me, uh, but I'm looking to change this hat to a crown and be the king of casting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. You're already on your way over there. That's guaranteed. Oh. King of casting. The king of casting. Yeah. <laughs> like- I like it. I want to get into the flooring market at some point. We can talk about that I mean, later. I want to get into flooring too. I mean, flooring is so much. I mean, there's a lot of lot of flooring. Oh, Margin, yeah. Margins are good too. Yes, the margins are good, uh, but it does come with a lot of headaches. Uh, yeah, I know. The, we can worry about that later. Yeah. We'll worry about so. that later once we hammer down this market. We got a hammer. We got a lot to go in this market. So we're also uh, what I love about lab surface is that we can actually talk to the chemists and yes. they have multiple chemists with over 30 years of experience. And they're constantly working on stuff that us woodworkers needs. And now that's also what's great about this epoxy company. It's a content creator's epoxy. And so What's good about Alan is he is our middleman in between on what we want. When we find something like, like, for example, the quick curing art resin that is 24 hours curing um, these trays. No one came out with that yet. That is, that is, that is new to everybody on the market. And it's a game changer. And then you guys are also now working on a big thick casting, like four to six inches, right? Are we yes. working with that? And that's what's great about Lab Surface and and for us content creators, our voices are heard and we can actually make um, improvements with the epoxy. For example, the very first thing, the epoxy used to come out amber and then uh, and then we all got together and uh, they came it out crystal clear now. It's like it's like a little tent of a little blue now that it dries, you know, so it's uh, that was something that us uh got together and we were able to fix and then now this thick pour that's going to be outstanding yeah i mean and alan alan was like you know he's pushing products down our throat all the time right he's got he's got the pigments and and oils oils yeah we're 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 diversifying he's like a pit bull he's trying to get everything for us well i'm wearing long sleeves today because i got a lot up there Trust yeah. me. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Well, oh. Alan, man, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time and and you know also just thank you for partnering with us and we're we're really really grateful for Lab Surface and you and for you know the the brand that we're building together and yeah I'm I'm super I'm super excited. I'm extremely excited about it as well. And like I said before, you guys make it a lot easier on me with what you guys do. And I just think that we go hand in hand very well. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Between the three of us, we started a good team. And now between all of us, we are creating an amazing team with everybody on our team, all the distributors and ambassadors and the people that use our product. Um, we're we're all really coming together to be a good little community here. And we all helping each other out like family. So I think it's just outstanding what's going on and what to come here in the future. Cause it's only going to expand and get better. Yes. Awesome. Going to get bigger and better every day. Alan, how can people get in touch? What's your, uh, what's your Instagram? And on Facebook, it's Alan Nicholson. Uh, I also started a, what do you call it? One of those, not uh, a page. Yeah. Called Epic, uh, Epic Designs and Creations. Yeah. Cool. So you could follow that as well, because it's all that. That's all for you, woodworkers out yep. there. Everything you create, I put on that page to help you guys grow. Awesome. To help build brands, and that's what we're about. We're gonna we're gonna focus exactly. on building people's brands and uh get everybody with more followers and that's the that's the whole point and object to this so i love it alan appreciate awesome. it man thank you so much man we'll see you next time yes talk to you guys soon thank you see you later bye hope you enjoyed today's episode of the epoxy business podcast probably sponsored by old log and epoxy Make sure you subscribe and follow us so you don't miss the next episode. For more information on other offerings from the Woodpreneur Network, you can check out woodpreneurlife.com. We'll see you next week.